The month of May is Jewish Heritage Month, and the John Jay Athletic Department is celebrating Jewish athletes around the globe to celebrate their achievements on and off the field. The first guest is Ty Kelly. Kelly is currently playing for the Tacoma Rainiers, which is the AAA affiliate for the Seattle Mariners. Kelly has amassed more than 3,000 professional games, including three seasons in the big leagues for the New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies between 2016 and 2018. Kelly also represented Team Israel in the 2017 World Baseball Classic and will represent Team Israel in the 2021 Olympics this summer in Tokyo. And he joins us now. I am curious when you do get the call to represent Team Israel, thinking back to all your time, whether it's in the cage, the backyard, I'm sure the dream was to become a major league player. Were the Olympics ever on your mind? Was that something that you put on a list of goals that you had? I don't think baseball-wise the Olympics were were ever in my mind, but I think, uh, you know, watching every four years, like watching the U.S. or and then watching all the other countries um, that as a kid, like you don't really know that much about, but um, getting to watch the entire world compete uh, for, you know, for different competitions, different sports and everything is, it was always so cool. Um, and I think it always, like, you're always kind of checking the paper the next day, how many medals does, uh, does your country have? And I think that sort of everyone around the world is, is doing that, trying to keep up with, um, with how they're doing or with how, you know, nowadays, like how their favorite athletes are doing. I think so much of the world, uh, you know, tuning into the NBA following uh, LeBron James and stuff, you know, from from everywhere. Um, I think the Olympics just sort of brings out um, that kind of the you know the world following and and um, so I think that that everyone followed the Olympics no matter what uh, whether they thought they were going to participate in them or not. So um, you know having this line up with baseball being in this one um, just sort of uh, you know it feels like a a once in a lifetime kind of thing. And um, so, yeah, I think we're all very excited and, um, and, and yeah, just can't wait to, to be one of those people that everyone around the world is watching. You had a chance to go to Jerusalem to see the country a few years ago when you were asked to participate in the WBC. But I am curious though, did you have the opportunity to speak to youngsters? How popular is baseball in Israel? And do you kind of hope to be that beacon to grow the game uh, in the Middle East? Yeah, one of our big missions with um, with the Israel Baseball Organization um, has been trying to bring as much baseball to Israel as possible. So we've done camps and we've met um, lots of teams in, in different cities. And I think the biggest thing is just that there there is a lot of interest in baseball. There are a lot of expats. There are a lot of people that um, that know about baseball, people that spend time both in Israel and then in the U.S., um, where they, you know, they see baseball and go to games and and bring the, you know, the love for the game back to Israel. But the biggest thing is just fields to play on. So, um, you know, one of the things that we've tried to do is to, you know, crew, to build fields basically to create more interest and let kids play. Um, so many practices that we go to are just uh, in the corners of soccer fields. And so it's very difficult to, to really get kids into it if they're just sort of off to the side doing a, you know, something to fill the time until they get to the next soccer season and to the next season of, of whatever other thing they're doing. So um, the more fields that we can build there, I think it, it'll just uh, grow the game exponentially because there already is such a, an interest in, I think, understanding of baseball um, for kids there already. Are the Olympics a little more special being in a baseball country like Japan, where there is a rabid fan base? And of course, we don't know what the fan situation is going to be like and how many international fans are going to be permitted, but if at all, but just curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think it'll definitely, I think it'll definitely make it uh, a lot more fun. I think that the fans that are there will, they'll know exactly what's going on and they'll be very into the games. Um, so we're not going to be just kind of another, uh, you know, like a random Olympic event that uh, I guess random to us in America. Um, but we're not going to be uh, some competition that 
a lot of the, the people in the country don't know about and may not have much interest in. So I think that that's exciting. And I think that, um, you know, getting to play against the Japanese team in Japan, um, hopefully that happens. I think that'll be, um, that's kind of the, you know, the top, I guess. All right, so I have to ask because our audience is based in New York. That 2016 year for you, I'd have to imagine personally uh, on sorts of levels, you got to achieve what you wanted to achieve, getting called up by the Mets, playing in a playoff game. What do you remember about getting the call to the big club and just that summer? Because the Mets were out of it, then they rallied in the summer, hosted a home game, and uh, you know the rest is obviously history. But what, what are some memories that stick out in your mind? When I got called up, it, uh, it was uh, like five minutes before a game started. So we were in Colorado Springs and um, I wasn't playing that day. So I just walked down to the dugout. Um, and when I got down there, our manager, who was uh, Wally Backman at the time, um, he likes to do a whole dramatic thing uh, with players getting called up. So his thing is that um, if a guy gets called up that they owe him a bottle of uh, like whiskey or something like that. And I still don't, don't even know what kind of alcohol it is, but he does, this, he does this like whole speech, like, Oh, you owe me a bottle of, uh, of doers. I was like, well, like, what are you talking about? He's like, go up to the clubby, tell him that you owe me a bottle of doers. I was like, I still, I don't even know what that is. And he's like, go up to the clubby uh, on your way out. Tell me that you owe me a bottle of doers. You're going to meet the team in Washington tomorrow. Congratulations. So it's like this whole thing and the whole uh, team is pretty much in the dugout and then everyone congratulates you. And then, um, and yeah, I just pretty much uh, walked out from there and um, got on a plane. And then, uh, and then I got in that night after a game and then met the team the next day um, at the stadium. So um, yeah, it was just kind of a, it was, I mean, it was very cool. I got to, I guess, the that morning I went and had breakfast with uh, Logan Verrett and, um, and yeah, just sort of started living the life, I guess, um, in like a much nicer hotel than we were at in Colorado Springs. And, um, and, and yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. You're an advocate for minor leaguers uh, and on Twitter saying, we believe minor league players deserve fair pay. Join us if you agree. And how important is that for you to get the word out? Uh, it's incredibly important because everyone um, that goes through minor league baseball that has been through minor league baseball has gone through all of the same things. Um, so, you know, obviously there's huge issues with pay um, and just in general of not getting paid enough um but obviously but also like not getting paid in the off season while they're being expected to train not getting paid at spring training and that goes with major league players as well it's just one of those things that's been like that forever that uh that they just don't want to change because they don't have to so we we're hoping to you know to force their hand to to make those sorts of changes and to treat players uh better to treat them first as employees of their organization that deserve um, you know fair pay some sort of minimum wage uh, would be a great place to to start um, but to also treat them as prospects that are going to be their major leaguers that are going to make them the billions of dollars that they make every year so um, so yeah so it's an it's incredibly important because major league baseball has had uh, you know, basically a monopoly for so long and, and haven't had to change anything. Um, so it's time that they, uh, that they treated, uh, you know, their minor leaguers um, as human beings, first of all. No, Ty, I really appreciate it. On top of all the fun social media stuff that you do anyway, I think it's cool to see um, some serious stuff that you're doing. Well, it was a pleasure to speak to you. Congratulations on the Olympic nod. Good luck in the Olympics. We'll be rooting for you here uh, all the way from New York. And thanks again for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you.